So on my desk, I have this device like this. It's called Pixel, and this is just autopilot computer embedded system to control your drones and RC cars and boat and underwater submarines and so on. As you can see, it has pins like this. You can connect your servo motors. Then you can control the actuators like propellers or fin if it is a boat. As you can see, you can also connect the GPS. And then inside of it, by default, it has accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer. So that's why if I look at this part, this is attitude indicator and then heading indicator on top of this uh, ground control station. And as I move, this indicator also moves as well and heading indicator as well. Now, if I look at this graph, the move is going to plot like this signal. This is the roll angle. Then let me clear this. Stop clear, start again. And then if I don't touch it, like staying there idle, it comes with some default noise. It's not like flatline zero because there is a noise. And then we as robotics engineers, we want to handle this noise because we cannot eliminate this noise from the first spot. It's just something there is a natural phenomenon. So we need to use the algorithm. However, even before implementing this algorithm, we need to understand this noise, how to describe it. It's about data distribution, mean and variance. If it is 2D, mean and covariance. So if I only look at this data, it's like this, like up, going up and down around zero, right? So if I write down that data, it may look like this. Around zero, it's going up and down. 0.5, negative this number, this number, this number, this number, as time goes. And then if I just collect the data and then take the average of all these, say this is just like this, right? Also, we can calculate the variance like this. And literally, you're just plugging a number like this, and then you can come up with this number. And then what does this variance mean? It means, so what does this variance mean? We just want to quantify the distance of all these data around the mean, which is this average. So I want to see in this data or this sensor property says this sensor has large mean. That means it's not a good sensor. Or this variance is low, like this sensor noise level is much less than this, then that's a good sensor, right? So we want to quantify data distribution around the mean from a data source or data itself. In this case, in our case, the data source is a sensor, so we are talking about the quality of the sensor. But more precisely, it's not just the quality of the sensor, in general, quality of the information from this data distribution. So if it is 2D data distribution, it's like this. Suppose your robot with GPS sensor is actually physically at exactly on 0,0, .0 on 2D world. However, just like the other sensor I just showed you, GPS has a noise. And sometimes at that moment, it measures the location like that. And then after like 0 0.01 second, it measures like here, 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 here. So this kind of GPS will never give you the ideal position of 0,0. .0. Instead, it will just keep giving you some data around this point. And then you can also describe this distribution of the position of your robot like this. And then just like the 1D data, you can calculate the mu, which is the mean of this data for x-axis like this, and then y like this, and then same for the sigma, which is the variance for x-axis, y-axis, and then sigma for x, y, which means you want to now relate the y correlated distribution for both axes at the same time. And then you can calculate the covariance like this. And then like always, really the mathematicians and engineers, they really love matrix. So you can put all these in the matrix format like this, sigma square x, sigma square y, and then sigma x, y, sigma x, y, and they just call it covariance matrix. Covariance. Yeah, I think my writing is pretty good, right? <laughs> anyway, before we talk more about these kind of things, let's see how this Python code implement this kind of idea. For this part, I just opened up this one, 7, 8. Then let me close that one. Then I just select the base Python environment, and then I just click run all. What it's doing here is just literally calculating the mean and variance of a simple data like this. So first I'm just importing NumPy and Matplotly, which is for graphing package again. 
And then NP, that random seed, is there because if I create some numbers with random function like this, so if we use the same random seed like me, you will have the same numbers like this. And then just creating the data like np.random and rand, and I'm just generating five points, well, it's not 105. Anyway, so if I print that data, it just looks like this. And then in, in the mean, which is just an average, you just add them all up and then divide by the number of this data point, and it's just going to be like this. And then if I want to calculate the variance, I can just do this thing. And if I want to break down this, so x minus mean is this part. X minus mean is that part. Then I'm just delaying the square of this part, right? X i minus mu. And then I'm just summing them all up because of this part, right? And then finally, I'm just dividing all that by this number of the data, which is n here. Then that's how you want to calculate the variance. Then calculate this and variance as well, like this. So that's just a Python version of calculating mean and variance. Now let's look at the 2D data distribution. I'm just talking about the same thing like this slide. Keep going down, keep going down, and then covariance is like that, which is this thing. Then again, same random seed. I'm now creating the random data for like hundreds by two. So if I'm curious, if you want to look at it, just try to print the data. And then it's just like this 100 by two data set, which is just like this kind of data, like 100 data point for 2D XY points. Delete that for now. And then if I want to calculate the mean again, you can just use this equation, which is the same as before. And then same equation again for variance X and Y. And then if you want to calculate the covariance, you can now mix it together. Instead of square of the same thing, you can just multiply X minus X mean, Y minus Y mean for all X, Y in the data then divide all that by the number of data. It's pretty straightforward. And then once you calculate that, this is a result, mean for x, mean for y, variance x, variance y, and then you can also calculate the covariance like this, and then if you just simply put this into a matrix form, it's just going to be like this, which is just repetition of this. Oh, and then you can also just directly calculate the covariance matrix like this. So you don't have to calculate all these separately in Python and then put them in the matrix form. You can just do this and then just NumPy will just directly return this covariance matrix like this. And then you maybe wonder like the numbers are a little different and that's not because of this function, but because it's your, the numbers are rounded in a different way, but they are anyway that's coming from the same data, so they should be the same. And by now you might be wondering like, why the hell am I talking about mean and variance? And that's because we want to understand the noise. And then the good thing about this concept of variance and mean covariance, this kind of thing, is actually a new language to describe the noise of the data or data itself. Because we want to compare this sensor and that sensor and so on. And then this sensor is like $100. It gives you a covariance of this much. And then like $1,000 sensor gives you much less covariance. Now you can compare the different sensors, different data distribution with only looking at the mean and variance instead of looking at these thousands of data points like this. In the previous video, we talked about the idea of mean and covariance. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Gaussian distribution. And I know by looking at this kind of equation, you don't feel like I want to study. Yeah, I get it because I was there too. However, the good news is that you don't have to memorize this. And then I also don't memorize this equation. Whenever I need, I just Google it or look at my notes to see this equation. And more importantly, we just want to use the idea of this Gaussian distribution. The equation itself is not that important. And then as you can see, this Gaussian distribution function is made of mean here, mean and variance like this. So what I mean by idea of this Gaussian distribution? In the real life, the sensor always follow this kind of behavior, always center whenever you sample the data from your sensor is always the data is dis distributed around the mean. In this case, just mean happened to be zero, but it's always, most of the data is around zero, and then fewer data is distributed at the end of this Gaussian distribution. If I look at this data again, as you can see, 
most of the data is around zero. And then only a few data points like here are fewer. So if I happen to draw a Gaussian distribution for this sensor signal at this moment, it's going to be like this, okay? That's the Gaussian distribution if I look at this data from this side. So that's the behavior of the sensor noise. And then most often time, it follows the Gaussian distribution. That's the point. And if, obviously, if I plot this in 2D, Gaussian distribution can be plotted in 2D data set like this. So again, if your robot is at 0, 0, and then you just stay there, your robot didn't move, but sensor noise is here and there. And then if you just measure the property of your robot, it can be represented as 2D Gaussian distribution. Again, the representation can be made of mean and variance. And that's the main takeaway of this video because in the later chapter, we'll be talking about common filter and then common filter is based on the idea of mean and covariance like this. For now, let's look at this in Python anyway. So I'm just using the same script as before. And then this is just definition of the Gaussian distribution equation as you have seen. And then the point of this Gaussian distribution function is that now you can regenerate the data. In the previous video, we have extracted information like mean and covariance from the data distribution, right? So if that's a compression data file like zip, right? If that's a extracting information, the Gaussian distribution is the other way. If you have mean and covariance, you can regenerate the data again. So that's the idea of the Gaussian distribution. So let's define mean and standard deviation is like one, which is just a, a sigma instead of sigma square. Sigma square was the covariance. And the number of samples, 1000. Then I'm just creating now the data following the Gaussian distribution. It just happened to be like this. And then this is just the function that can generate this Gaussian distribution. And the name here is normal. And that's because another name of Gaussian distribution is normal distribution. So in statistics course, they will name it as normal distribution. However, for the same thing, if you're in engineering course, they call it Gaussian distribution. I have no idea why, but well, that's just a cultural difference maybe between math and engineering. But anyway, they are the same thing. So to regenerate this kind of data, you can use this function and pass mean standard deviation number of samples. And then it's just plotting here, size of the figure. We are now creating a histogram, these blue bars, and then just plotting all that is going to end up with this. The code of this is not really important in this course because it's just a mathematical idea. And then the point here is again, we'll just use the idea of the Gaussian distribution is that it's just distributed around the mean. That's the only takeaway. That's the 1D Gaussian distribution in Python. And then same for 2D. This time, this is 2D, so we're going to define mean as 2D, then covariance matrix like this, and then number of samples are like this. And then instead of normal, I'm using multivariate normal. That means just a 2D or 3D. The rest of them are the same. And then this is just an equation for the 2D Gaussian distribution. Then doing the same thing to plot all this data. And then it just looks like this. Again, the most important thing is just idea of mean and covariance in 2D or maybe 3D space. And then next cell, I'm going to talk about eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix. I know it sounds scary. And then eigen values, I will discuss that next video. But for now, let's just assume we know what the heck is this eigen value. And then eigen values gives us information about the relationship between X and Y data distribution. So let's for now, let's just keep going. And then if I look at the result like this, there is data which we just have seen. And then if you just do some eigenvalue extraction of this covariance matrix, then somehow it gives the principal axis like this. So this is about the relationship of this data. As you can see, this data is stretched towards more like a diagonal way, like this green arrow. And then perpendicular to that, there is red arrow, which means another stretch to another direction in this 2D. And these vectors are called eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. Somehow, if we can calculate the eigenvalues and eigen of a covariance matrix, you can calculate how the data is distributed with the principal axis. And principal axis, again, means most correlated 
axis of this data distribution. And also what you can see here is that this data is rotated. Instead of distributing in a flat line, it follows this diagonal line. In the next video, we'll talk about the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. But for now, the main takeaway is that you can also describe the property of this data distribution by its stretched axis, which is called the principal axis. And also, you can get this uh, information about the rotation of this data itself. So that's about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then let's talk about that in the next video.